Here are my top four tips for using the channel box inside of Maya. Tip number one is how we can edit the values in the channel box and get real time update in the viewport. You can obviously type a value in here, but if we wanna see what's happening as we change the value, we can click and drag, which you're probably already aware of, but it's not very precise. It's changing sort of one unit at a time. If I hold down control and do the same, click and drag, you can see that it's actually going up in 0.1 intervals now. And so we can get much more um, precise movement. And another way of doing a similar thing is if you select the name, or you can select multiple if you want to, and then you bring your cursor into the viewport and hold down the middle mouse button and move, you can do a similar thing. And that actually uses two decimal places so you can get even smaller movements. Tip number two is how we can change the number of decimal places that Maya shows. So if I typed in um, 1.1234, for example, you'll see that Maya's only showing me the two decimal places and not the four that I typed in. Um, but we can change that. So if we go to edit, settings, change precision, we then have the ability to say how many decimal places we want Maya to show. So I typically use four, if I hit okay. Now Maya will show me four decimal places in my channel box and you can see that even though it was only showing one, two before, it still retained that I'd typed in three, four and it's now brought that information back. Tip number three is about the history stack, which we can see inside of the channel box really easily. When I modeled this, I just did some operations here. The history can be used to edit things at a later date. So if I go and click on the first extrude, I can see that I used an offset of 3.9, but what if I wanted the offset to be smaller? Well, I can come in and edit the value in the channel box really easily. It's really important to remember that the history isn't just there to be deleted and it, it can be used and you can come in and make changes um, to your objects quite easily using the history and the easiest way to do that is through the channel box. Tip number four is using the channel box to add in some custom attributes. So if I were gonna rig this, trunk I would want my animator to be able to use an attribute that opens up this lid and I wouldn't want the animator to have to spend any time trying to figure out which of the rotation axes that is I want it to be super obvious for them so what I would do is I would create um, a control like I have here and on this control I'm going to show you how we would add a custom attribute and you can add these attributes for anything. So if I go to edit, add attribute, and here it's gonna ask us for a long name. This is just gonna be what you want your attribute to be called. So I'm gonna have this trunk open and I'm going to make it so that it's keyable and I'm gonna leave it as a float, which is just a value and click okay. So we can see here that it's added a trunk open attribute and what we need to do is link this to the rotation of this group and so to link it we would go to edit connection editor and we have the trunk control if I scroll down to the bottom we have the custom attribute we added so we would click on that and then what we need to do is load in our group here and then we want to find rotation which is here Just check that down and then it's the rotate Z that I want the trunk open to animate for us so I would click that and then we can hit close and now if I go back to this control the trunk open attribute opens our trunk I can also come in here right click and hide all of these and it makes it even more obvious to the animator this is the control if I click that what does it allow me to do it allows me to open the trunk what we also can do is if I just go to edit 
so I'll just select it, edit, edit attribute, we can add a minimum and a maximum, so we can add a minimum as zero, so the animator can't go into the minus values and close the trunk further than it should, and we can set a maximum, so for this I know it's something like 95 I think I would want, and what that means is, again, the animator can open this, but once they hit 95, they can't open it anymore, so using custom attributes is a really great way of um, creating rigs inside of Maya in the channel box.